Yes, some of the Normandy is sailed from Southampton there four years today. Yes. Will it take long? Oh, okay. No, my name is Whiteside. Thank you. Hydrophobia. No, no. Mr. Whiteside, you are a well man. You can get up and walk now. You can leave here tomorrow. What do you mean? No, hell, sir. I looked at those x-rays again this afternoon. Do you know what? I have been looking at the wrong x-rays. I was looking at all Mrs. Moffat's x-rays. You are perfectly, absolutely well. Lower your voice, please. What's the matter? Aren't you pleased? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Delighted. Uh, only this comes at a very uh, bit of a strange surprise. I mean, it's, uh, it's a very curious moment, uh, Doctor. Uh, you know, I I had a little surprise for you, Doctor. I've been uh, reading your book 40 years. An Ohio doctor, yes, I guess. Yes, yes, and I find it one of the great literary contributions of our time. Mr. Whiteside. Yeah, so much so that, well, I have a proposition. I would like to stay in the cell and work on it with you. It's a little rough and uneven in spots. Oh, Mr. Wakes, I, I would be so terribly honored. Yes, but you see, there's one little difficulty. If my broadcast sponsors and my lecture bureau find out well, that I'm well, I might have to leave the cell and to honor my contract. So therefore, we must not tell anyone that I'm well, not anyone at all. I see, I see. Not even Miss Cutler. No, I won't. Not a soul. Not even my wife. Fine, uh, good. Thank you. Mr. White said, wait, do we start work? Uh, Tonight? I've got just one patient that's dying, and then I'm perfectly free. <laughs> tomorrow, Doctor, tomorrow. Yes, hello. Yes, yes, I'm here. Uh, tomorrow, Doctor, is a private call, oh. please. Thank you. Tomorrow morning it is. <laughs> good night. I'll be so proud to work with you. You made me very proud, Mr. Whiteside. Yes, yes, very proud. Tomorrow, Doctor. Tomorrow. Yes, sir, Mrs. Whiteside. Oh, oh, you put her on. Hello, my blossom girl. How are you? Yes, yes, no, I'm fine. I'm still out here. Uh, listen, Lorraine, uh, when do you land in New York? Uh, Tuesday. Very good. Uh, listen, blossom. I have some news for you, so listen very carefully. I just discovered a wonderful new play with an enchanting part in it for you. <laughs> yeah, I know, Great Cornell would give her eye teeth to play it, but if you get on a train and get out of here, I think I can get it for you. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Author is a young newspaper man in town. Now, he wants Cornell to play the part. But if you play your cards right, you can get it. No, no, he's young and handsome, just, just your sort of dish. That may take a little doing, but you're the right girl that can do it. Isn't that exciting? Yes, yes, that's right. Now listen, don't send me any messages. Just get on a train and get out of here. No, no, you don't have to thank me. It's perfectly all right. Now listen, have a wonderful trip and get out here as fast as you can. Bye-bye, uh, my blossom. Oh, Miss Free, don't you look radiant tonight.
why, just a little rabbit in the sunshine. I just a little rabbit in the rain. I dibble on my legs every morning.
operator? No. Could you give me a mansion house? No, I don't know the number. Hello, mansion house? Yes, can you tell me if uh, Miss Lorraine Sheldon has arrived? Lorraine Sheldon, New York, that's right. No, she hasn't. All right, thank you. Real photograph of artistry of these. 
say, I didn't know they were as good as that. I, I just like to take pictures, that's all. You know, Richard, I've been meaning to talk to you about this. Uh, this is uh, what you ought to be doing. You know, you ought to get out and do all those things that you wanted to do. You ought to get on a boat, get off in Galveston, Mexico, Singapore, walk around, take pictures, hundreds of pictures, terrible pictures, wonderful pictures, everything. Say, wouldn't I like to, though? I mean, it's, it's what I've been dreaming of for years. If I could do that, I'd, I'd be the happiest guy in the world. Well, why can't you do it? If I were your age, I'd jump at you. Well, you know why? My father. Is this something that you want to do more than anything in the world? It certainly is. Well, then do it. Hello, Dick. Good morning, Mr. Whiteside. Hello, June, my land. Now, Richard, it's up to you. I guess it is. Well, thank you, Mr. Whiteside. You've been swell. I'll never forget it. Right, oh, Richard. Jim, you're coming upstairs. Uh, in a minute, Richard. Well, knock on my door, which I want to talk to you. Yes, all right. Mr. Whiteside. Jim, my land, you're probably too young to have heard of the Elwood murder case. Oh, it was fascinating. I have five great murders in the world, and the Elwood case was one of them. Would you like to hear about it? Mr. Whiteside, I was hoping I could talk to you. It's very important. Certainly. I take it this is about your young Lotharia factor? Yes. I, I can't seem to make father understand. It's like talking to a brick wall. Uh, I don't know what to do, Mr. Whiteside. Sandy and I love each other, and I don't know where to turn. Well, I'd like to meet this young man of yours. I'd like to see him for myself. Oh, would you? Uh, he's outside. He's in the kitchen. Well, bring him in. Mr. Whiteside? Sandy's a very delicate boy. You'll be nice to him, won't you? God damn it, you. When we always learn that I'm always kind and courteous. Bring the idiot in. <laughs> Here he is, Mr. Whiteside. This is Sandy. How do you do, sir? How do you do, young man? You have been telling me a lot about you this past week. It seems that you two babes in the woods have gone completely out of your minds. There's another word for it. Oh, love. Well, you've come to the right place, Dr. Sheridan. White side, broken heart, mended, breaks, relying, hamburgers. Hooray! Well, if June has told you anything at all, Mr. Whiteside, you know the jam we're in. You see, I work for the labor union, Mr. Whiteside. I'm an organizer. I've been organizing the men in Mr. Stanley's factory, and Mr. Stanley's pretty sore about it. I bet it is. Did you tell you that? Yes, you did. Well, that being the case, Mr. Whiteside, I don't think I have the right to try to influence June. If she marries me, it means a definite break with her family. I don't like to bring that about. But the trouble is, Mr. Stanley is so stubborn about it, so arbitrary. You know, this is not something I've done just to spite him. We fell in love with each other. But Mr. Stanley behaves as though we're all a big clock. John L. Lewis sent me here just to marry his daughter. He tried to fire Sandy twice down at the factory, but he couldn't on account of the Wagner Act, thank God. Yes, he thinks I wrote that, too. <laughs> he just let Sandy talk to him, he let me talk to him. Well, we've gone over all that, June. Anyway, this morning I got word I'm needed in Chicago. I may have to go on to Frisco from there, so you see the jam we're in. Sandy's leaving tonight, Mr. Whiteside. He'll probably be gone a year, so we simply got to decide now. Well, this is absurdly simple. There's no problem to it at all. In my join this I have a little... Hello? Yes, yes, this is Whiteside. Oh, oh, this is a transatlantic call. Uh, yes, yes, who's calling? Oh, whoa, what? Walt Disney calls me every since Hollywood. Yes, 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 put him on. Hello, Walt, how are you? How is my little dash of genius? <laughs> oh, I was hoping that you would. How did you know I was here? Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. A few seconds more? Okay. Every Christmas he called me, and I know where I am. Yes? Oh, yes, I hear, I hear. Well, it sounds like static, too. Oh, thank you, old fellow. Thank you, and Merry Christmas. Oh, wait, listen, what's news in Hollywood? Who's in Lana Turner's sweater these days? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
yet I'm so sorry about Fantasia Walt. I mean, it wasn't your fault. Beethoven has a hat of his ears. Yes, well, well, listen, goodbye and Merry Christmas. <laughs> You know what that was that you listened to? The voice of Donald Duck. Not really. Yes, Mr. Disney called me every Christmas just so that I could hear it, no matter where I am. Two years ago, I was walking in the bottom of the ocean in my diving suit with William Beebe, and he got me. <laughs> now, where were we? Oh, yes, uh, your young man. You know, uh, I like you, young man, and I have an unerring instinct about people. I'm never wrong. That's why I wanted to meet him. As far as I'm concerned, you two people would be very happy. You know, despite what he believes that he's entitled to, don't let anyone push you around. You know, it comes down to bare essentials. I mean, what does it come down to? Making your father unhappy. I mean, is that right? Very unhappy. Well, that's not the point. So let them be unhappy. I mean, it's good for them. It develops their character. <laughs> I left home when I was four, and I haven't been back since. <laughs> hey, hear me on the radio, and that's perfectly fine with them. Then your advice is to go ahead, Mr. Whiteside. It is. Marry him tonight. You mean that, Mr. Whiteside? No, I meant marry Hamilton Fish. <laughs> of course I meant it. If I didn't mean I wouldn't say it. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you're not worthy of it. Come on, Daisy. I'm dawdling. Oh, there's that. Excuse us for disturbing you, Mr. Whiteside. Oh, that's all right, old fellow. It's Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, June, would you like to come with us? We're bringing some gifts to the Dexters. No, Mother. I'm, I have some letters to write. Come along, Daisy. Oh, uh, Mr. Stanley, uh, what happened to your forehead? Did you have an accident? No. I'm taking boxing lessons. <laughs> Go ahead, Daisy. 